Okay, so welcome to a more in-depth look at this video. And here's how the two cars shape up. The key thing here is the Porsche has 123 more horsepower, while the Lotus weighs 320 kilos less. So here we are, uh, rolling down the pit lane at Spa. You can see just how steep the hill is here as you go up to the exit at Radial. And also how firm the GT3 is um, in its track settings. It's very stiff, but um, as it has to be. But of course you can soften that up from the road. So this is the one kilometre long Camel Straight. And the Porsche, how does it feel on the track? Well, very solid. Very reassuring, uh, incredibly easy actually. PDK makes things uh, makes it very easy to drive. You can jump straight into left-hand drive without any problems. So this is where we start picking up the pace a little bit. So how about this PDK gearbox then? Well, you can hear how quickly it shifts. It definitely makes the car look easier to drive. There's no question about that. I'm not convinced that's necessarily a good thing on road and track car though. It's a great thing in a race car. Um, for the road, I think it would be nice to have a bit more interaction. It does work really well with the car's other many electronic systems though, but for what it's worth I think the Nissan GTR's dual clutch box is actually smoother at high revs and, and delivers a more complete sensation of uninterrupted thrust. Jumping straight back in the Exige, uh, the first thing you notice is it feels a lot smaller and more compact around you. Um, there is, as you can hear, more noise coming through. Um, that's actually quite nice on the track with a great helmet on. Uh, the steering is absolutely alive in your hands and it really weights up as you turn into the corners. So it's a lot more physical car to drive. But it's also a lot more agile. You really notice the weight, uh, particularly on the brakes and the braking zones. The whole car moves around a lot more too, um, and straight line performance is right up there. As you're about to see, uh, they are very close in a straight line. Uh, the next section shows a flat out run in both cars from about 40 miles an hour, uh, exiting the bus stop, getting up to about 120 before La Source. So it's the Porsches go first. The time starts to cross this white line. As you can see it's about seven seconds to the bridge. And then down into the brakes, it's about 15 seconds to the apex of the last source. So in the Lotus, we also sort of dark the clock short shifted a little bit second but again as you can see as the bridge is coming here it's around seven seconds the Porsche has the edge but there's very little in it the Lotus makes up a lot of time on the brakes as we hit the apex about a second earlier but to be fair um, I was pushing the Lotus quite a bit harder which down now from La Source down to Eau Rouge fairly fast entry at about 120 miles an hour. And you typically lose about 20 miles an hour up to this point and then you're hard on the gas for a whole kilometre. It's uphill so um, you don't build speed the same way you would on the flat. So here's the Exige doing the same thing. the curbs of anything slightly better um, and here we go for see what peak speed we achieve at the fastest point just before the braking is out so 
I saw 148 miles an hour. Um, which is the best I could do. The Porsche is, as you'd expect, more powerful, more slippery. Um, and it achieved a higher top speed. About, it's good for about 10 miles an hour. But I don't believe you can stop as quickly in the Porsche. So you do claw some time back on the brakes and the exertion. But this is now the approach in the Porsche to the Rivage um, corner. This feels like a corner that's been designed for nothing but generating understeer. If any car will understeer, it will be here. Um, it's a really long, patient wait to get back onto the gas. And this is where I was most impressed with the GT3, the 991 GT3 with the four-wheel steering. It feels like that system was designed just for that corner. So here we're taking the same section of the exige, the nose pushes a bit wider there. It comes back nicely for that corner and then it's a fast charge down into the garage. And it's like, you can't tell in the videos, it's quite a plunge downhill at this point. And it's very off camera, the road really drops away to the left. Uh, so you're really, really loading up the front left tyre. Um, the exige trophy is clean on the way around there. fantastic day with two great cars around one of the world's great tracks. So I hope to bring you some more video comparisons soon. Thanks for watching.